All right, it's Buck. Thanks for clicking by. I'm gonna be doing a demo on the uh, Sennheiser XSW or XS wireless system. It's a true diversity system, meaning it takes two antennas. Um, let's take a look at the front panel for a minute. It's got the on off switch and it's got the makeup volume here, just the volume control, if you wanna call it that. But once you set your, your transmitter level, then you finish it off with this. So I'll probably just uh, move this over here a bit. I'm gonna turn the unit around, we'll take a look at it. By the way, this is uh, in the 500 megahertz bandwidth, the legal bandwidth. You are no longer allowed to use the 700 megahertz bandwidth, keep that in mind. Take a look at the front again. It's numbered one. So I also number the handset one. So if I have multiple wireless units, I know which is which. Okay, so we haven't turned it on yet. We're just gonna take a look at the back panel. We see it's got two antenna BNC mount mounts. So you can mount your antenna, which come with it. If you have a, uh, a wireless shark fin system, you can hook it up to that instead, like a distribution system. But we're just gonna hook up the single wireless unit like this and this, we got our antenna. We're gonna see it's got uh, balanced and unbalanced connections over here, balanced or unbalanced. And then you have a little switch. So you can switch between balanced and unbalanced, of course. And just moving the unit this way a little bit, it's got a squelch control, SQ. You always wanna keep your squelch all the way in the off position. It's hard to see. So you really gotta take a close look at that. All right. You turn up the squelch only when you're getting static in the signal. Otherwise, leave the squelch all the way off. If you end up getting a little static in the signal, then during sound check, uh, what you can do is you can, you can turn your handset off. You're trying to look for a clean channel, but you never know when you're gonna get static in the air. So turn the handset off and see if there's any static that happens intermittently on its own and turn up the squelch until it goes away. And then if somebody accidentally turns off the power and doesn't tell you, then it's not gonna result in a large, a gross static noise in the PA system, which is gonna freak everybody out. So just to be certain, you wanna do a sound check, but you can never guarantee what's gonna happen in the air. So just be aware that a little bit of squelch will take that static away, but you know, if you use too much squelch, you might uh, limit your range. So just be careful of that. Okay, zooming out again. All right, so I got this set up with my antenna. I'm gonna plug my power in. Power goes in there. All right, we're all set up back here. I'm gonna switch it to, uh, let's see, mic level because I want to use the XLR outs and not the line level. Although if I'm right near the mixing board, I could just use the line level as well. Whatever I have available, I, at least I have a choice, but I always go for the balanced connection first. So it automatically turns on. Now I'm gonna turn the uh, handset on by holding this button for three, one Mississippi, two, well, just under two seconds. And you can see um, 569, well, they're matched in frequency right here. There we go, 569.525. You can barely read it. It's right there on the little display window. Um, okay, but what happens if, what happens if these aren't matched in frequency? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the set button down and change frequencies to show you how to sync it up. You see it's flashing once I hold set and I just scroll to another frequency far away, another frequency far, far away, and I press set one more time and it's now at 569.875. Well, this is still at the 569.525 or whatever it was. So now I gotta sync these two units up. I'm gonna hold down my sync button right here until sync flashes on the window, hold it down. Sync is flashing now. Oh, I gotta keep holding it down, otherwise it'll disappear. And then I press sync, right there, sync. And I've now, testing, testing, I've locked them into sync. Let's do that again. I'm gonna hold set, press set. I'm gonna look for a frequency far, far away, far, far away, way down here somewhere, 568 something. And press set one more time. This is no longer in sync with it, so I gotta sync this up. This is still at 569 point something. So now again, hold sync down on the handset, holding sync, wait for sync to flash in the display window, 
and then simply press sync and you are in sync and there's my audio level and my wireless level it's showing me that the um, uh, I've got a pretty strong level but I haven't really set the gain on here so for somebody talking into a PA system I normally set it to minus 10 let's see the scale here but what I'm gonna do for a speaking voice that's not going directly to camera in a live situation for question and answer, I go to minus 10. Now I've set this to minus 10 for uh, many, many live events over the past few years and I've never changed it from minus 10 and it's a perfect setting. If I'm gonna do Q&A um, in an interview situation, I might set it to zero. If I'm outside, I'll set it to minus 10 because outside you gotta talk a little louder. Now for a singer on stage, you might wanna set this to minus 20 or minus 30 because a singer's gonna be quite loud on stage depending on the singer. So if it's a soft singer, you might go to minus 20, but just as a rule of thumb, I always set it to minus 30 and I make up the gain somehow on the board so I don't run the risk during the show of distortion from a loud singing voice because you don't always have the opportunity to do a sound check. So when in doubt, just go to minus 30 for a singing voice, minus 10 for a speaking voice in a live situation, and then, you know, though I only really use those two and I can make up the gain in other ways. For example, I can take this volume right here and turn it all the way up. And because it's, it's post the transmitter, it's going to be a clean signal. So you're not worried about distorting if you turn it all the way up. I start off with the volume up somewhere around 70%, right? For speaking voice, again, it's, it's 75%. And then 70% and then doing gain makeup if I need to. So that's basically the whole entire setup, gain structure, etc. Another tip here for wireless users in general is IKEA rechargeable batteries, which some people say you can't use rechargeable batteries for wireless systems. Well, that's not true. You absolutely can because of this right here 24, 50 milliamp hours. It's showing right here that the battery is nice and strong, okay? Because a 1.5 volt battery, a regular alkaline battery, like AA, is never 1.5 volts anyway. It's always a little above and a little below. These are supposedly 1.2 volts or 1.25, but they always go to 1.3 something to start. So they're actually pretty strong. You might not get the same range with a, le a little less voltage, but here's a test that, that I've done recently with some students. I took this very system with these very batteries in it, and we changed the batteries and compared them with alkaline batteries. And I walked all the way around our campus, all the way outside and all the way across the street, and both batteries worked. And that's uh, a little more than 200 feet. So, you know, within 200 feet, you're perfectly safe with rechargeable batteries. And if anybody tells you different, they haven't done the experiment I have. So I don't want to waste your time just telling you that you can use these beautiful IKEA rechargeable batteries. If you get a set of rechargeable batteries that are less than 2000 milliamp hours, again, these are 2450, but less than two, 2000, I wouldn't use them because they're not going to last as long. And then you're going to see the battery indicator start flashing. This only gives you a flash when it lets you know the batteries are on the last legs, okay? And I've, I haven't had that happen yet at any live event. So I got a ton of these, I got a ton of alkalines as well. And uh, if I run into problems with rechargeables, I can use the alkaline. So I'm never using one set anyways, just that I've got a lot of use, years of use out of these batteries in big rooms, like big conference rooms, and I've never ever had a problem. This is a great set. This is about $350 for the transmitter and receiver. Whereas the, uh, the metal version with the metal handle is about 700 something dollars. Well, this also doesn't have a light in the little display window here, so it's harder to see. So there's a few things it doesn't have that the other version has or the more expensive version has, but I've never had a problem with this. I just don't let anybody sing with my microphones. If it's a singing situation, they gotta bring their own mic because I don't trust, like they're too expensive, right? I don't want a singer to throw it to the ground and then I'm out a wireless microphone. So singers are welcome to bring their own. The other thing is you gotta be careful if you uh, rent these microphones or if you own them, always carefully unscrew the battery compartment and the gain, gain section where that's hiding too, because if you're in a hurry and you overdo it, you will actually split the plastic. I've seen this on other units. 
well, rental units that I used to rent where it's split because people over tighten them. So be careful not to over tighten because it is plastic. The metal ones, you're gonna have a harder time, much harder time splitting them because they're made of metal or some sort of composite metal material or whatever. Anyway, that's the Sennheiser unit. I've covered up the brand name here simply because um, I've just marked it as uh, transmitter number one or handheld number one. And that's all I got to say about this uh, Sennheiser XWS wireless system. This is, I guess, I mean, this is a few years old now, so there's a newer version of it, probably prettier colors, I'm not sure. But I've I'm doing a retro retro review at the same time as I'm showing you how to set it up and I've never had a problem with this unit or this I have two of them actually I've never had a problem with them. So there you go. Hope that helps. Cheers for now. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.